Hello, everyone, and greetings from the National Audiovisual Conservation Center in Culpeper, Virginia, United States. My name is Morgan Morell, and I'm the Video Lab Supervisor here at the Library of Congress's Audiovisual Archive. Before I continue, I want to note that while I am here representing the Library of Congress, my presentation includes opinions that are my own and not those of the Library or the U.S. government. I'm honored to speak with you all on the UNESCO World Day of Audiovisual Heritage about the preservation of videotape a topic that is near and dear to my heart and has been the focus of my career in audiovisual preservation. The history of videotape is important to discuss as it reveals how the methods we use to capture and remember our lives were profoundly transformed in the second half of the 20th century. This began in the 1950s with the invention of quadruplex or quad tape. Developed by Ampex in 1956, quad tape was the first practical video recording system. Quad tape's ability to capture video transformed live television production, making tape delay and reruns possible. However, the technology was large, expensive, and primarily used by television networks and studios for exclusively professional purposes. In the late 1960s, the development of half-inch videotape marked the advent of consumer-level video recording. For the first time ever, it was possible for individuals to record their image and play it back instantaneously, without the need for chemical intervention. Up until this point, the entirety of content held on videotape was curated and programmed by large television broadcast studios and, by and large, represented only the dominant culture of the time. The creation of half-inch videotape recording meant that images of individuals, communities, and identities that were previously ignored by dominant culture could now be recorded onto magnetic tape and played back on television screens. Consumer video technology continued to advance, and each successive format added technological features that further embedded video recording into the practices of artists, educators, dancers, musicians, activists, community leaders, and the fabric of individuals' everyday lives, leading to the explosion of cultural heritage recorded on magnetic tape. Thus, preserving audiovisual heritage held on videotape means preserving a significant portion of the world's history over the last 70 years. However, properly preserving videotape is no easy task. The physical and chemical makeup of videotape makes it extremely susceptible to damage and deterioration due to time and environmental factors. If stored improperly, videotape will experience sticky shed or soft binder syndrome, which causes the tape to stick to itself. Storing videotape in climate-controlled vaults, as we do at the Library of Congress, can help mitigate the deterioration of tape. However, even if tapes could be stored indefinitely, the problems posed by obsolescence will make them unplayable in the future. Sony discontinued manufacturing the latest generation of videotape recorders in 2016 and ended support for them in March 2023. This marked a key moment when all remaining videotape technology officially became obsolete. However, most videotape playback equipment had already been outdated for decades. The technological advances that allowed videotape to continuously improve led to the rapid obsolescence of earlier formats, putting any content recorded on them at risk. Right now, playback decks for any videotape format are becoming increasingly rare and expensive, and the knowledge to maintain and service them is becoming lost as trained technicians retire and pass away. Unless these skills are passed down to a new generation of technicians, it will become nearly impossible to support videotape playback equipment in any capacity. This is to say that there is simply no way to provide long-term preservation and access to materials held on tape. Digitization, if performed properly, allows us to capture all the important content and data contained on a tape and store it in a stable format. Videotapes and archives and collections must be digitized if collection holders plan to preserve and provide ongoing access to the content contained therein. Here at the Library of Congress, we have invested considerable resources into our video preservation lab to ensure that we can digitize and preserve as many of the videotapes held in our collection before time runs out. The lab has been designed in order to accommodate high volume digitization and uses a combination of robots, skilled technicians, and custom built automation software to enable the digitization of large volumes of tapes. In 2023, we preserved over 18,400 video objects and we plan to preserve even more in 2024. The robots that we use are responsible for over 80% of digitized content. However, they are nowhere near fully autonomous. There are a number of tasks that must be performed by skilled technicians before they can be loaded into the robots. This includes cataloging, barcoding, baking, cleaning, and entering the tapes into the robotic database. 
At the library, we're lucky to have three scientific ovens that can be used to bake sticky tapes, and cleaners for various formats that we can use to clean particularly dirty tapes. This equipment is critical for remediating these problematic tapes before playback. Additionally, there are technicians tasked primarily with digitizing tapes that the robots cannot handle, which can happen for any number of reasons. Some tapes are recorded poorly and require hands-on intervention and tape path realignment to playback properly. Others are recorded at slow speeds or in non-North American broadcast standards, which are not supported by the playback decks in the robots. These problematic tapes need to be first triaged, then digitized manually by a video preservation engineer. There are also various formats held in the Library of Congress's collection that cannot be digitized using robots. This includes open reel formats such as half-inch EIAJ, one-inch SMPTE Type-C, and two-inch quad. The library has thousands of two-inch quad tapes from New York City's public broadcasting station WNET, which we are constantly working to digitize. The decks that we use to digitize our quad tapes are over 50 years old, and it is a constant struggle to keep them up and running. Parts cannot simply be purchased from any retailer, and there are only a handful of living and working technicians in the country that are capable of doing this kind of work. We are lucky to have a large collection of parts and trained technicians on staff, and the ability to work with other technicians who can keep our quad decks running as well as they did in the 1970s. The Library of Congress also works in collaboration with Boston's public broadcasting station, GBH, as part of the American Archive of Public Broadcasting to ensure the preservation of content created at public broadcasting stations across the U.S. The AAPB began as a project funded by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, CPB. In 2013, CPB selected the library and GBH to be co-stewards for this project. The library is responsible for the long-term preservation of all files received through the project, while GBH is responsible for outreach and managing access to the materials via the AAPB website. The library receives digitized content from partner stations across the country, and we ensure that the digitized files are safely preserved in our archive. There are currently over 192,000 items in the collection, over 113,000 of which are available to view anywhere in the U.S. on the AAPB website. While it's easy enough for me to speak from the largest nonprofit video preservation lab in the United States and talk about the importance of digitizing your videotape collection, I realize that it is extremely difficult for individuals and small organizations to perform this digitization on their own. The difficulty is due to the same issues that I discussed earlier, degradation and obsolescence. Most individuals and under-resourced organizations don't have climate-controlled storage facilities to keep their videotapes from deteriorating, nor do they have access to obsolete video playback equipment, which can be prohibitively expensive to purchase and maintain. There are additional confounding factors as well, namely that there is a significant lack of support for digitization by current equipment manufacturers, as well as a lack of resources for education and training in the field. Audiovisual archivists have typically relied on equipment meant for use in broadcast video facilities when digitizing and preserving videotape. While there are a number of manufacturers and vendors still servicing the needs of the broadcast video field, very few of these vendors have products that support the digitization and processing of legacy video signals. This lack of support extends beyond just the decks. Frame synchronizers, time-based correctors, digitizers, and capture cards are critical components in a preservation signal chain and are quickly becoming prohibitively expensive, if not entirely unavailable. For some time now, well-funded archival organizations have been able to buy their way out of this issue by buying expensive but necessary equipment that is out of reach for organizations and individuals with smaller budgets. However, we are now starting to see a significant decrease in available equipment as manufacturers are ceasing production. Even organizations with large budgets are starting to have serious trouble acquiring the necessary equipment at any cost. For example, the Library of Congress has been using the Ensemble Design's Bright Eye 25 time-based corrector and converter for years in our digitization signal chains because it performed well, it was affordable, and readily available. Unfortunately, this device was discontinued earlier this year and cannot be purchased new at any cost. These issues affect individuals and underfunded archival organizations disproportionately. While affordable options for digitization do exist, they are neither simple nor well documented. Which brings us to the second major concern, the lack of available educational resources on this topic. Maintaining up-to-date educational and training resources for videotape preservation has always been difficult. 
Much like the equipment and the tapes themselves, the knowledge surrounding the maintenance and use of videotape playback and preservation equipment will be lost unless specific plans and structures are put in place to preserve it. As previously mentioned, obsolescence has been endemic to video technology since the very beginning. It's no coincidence that obsolescence also deeply impacts the knowledge and training surrounding the preservation of video. Unfortunately, without dedicated funding and maintenance plans, documentation can quickly become out of date. This is a situation that is unfortunately common in the field, and it is not uncommon to see resources that once represented state-of-the-art techniques themselves become obsolete. Not all is doom and gloom, however. There have been some significant advances in the field with regard to technology and education. While there is no one single resource or class offered that can teach you everything you need to know about digitization of videotapes, there are a number of people in the field working to expand knowledge and the state of the art. Before I continue, I would like to quickly note that the following links are being provided for convenience and do not represent an endorsement by the library. Over the past few years, a number of open source tools have been developed to aid both institutional and individual archivists preserve videotapes. Tools like DV Rescue and VRecord can be used to digitize and capture videotapes, while tools like MediaConch and QC tools can be used to ensure that files meet preservation standards and are free of critical errors. These tools were developed by preservationists for preservationists and have a wealth of documentation associated with them. The user communities are quite active and the GitHub issue trackers can help solve a number of common problems. Additionally, professional organizations like the International Federation of Film Archives, FIOF, and the International Association of Sound and Audiovisual Archives, IASA, and the Association of Moving Image Archivists, AMIA, are wonderful resources for learning more about videotape preservation and often publish resources on the topic. These organizations offer workshops for members during their annual conferences, as well as online workshops year round. The Memory Lab Network has created tape digitization stations that are open to the general public, along with training sessions for how to use these stations. While these stations currently only exist in the US, the Memory Lab Network has a wealth of resources on their website about how you can preserve your own personal collections. There are also a number of community-based organizations that focus on preserving local media, as well as creating and collecting educational content around the subject. Among these are Bayback Media, Meepops, Marmia, and Transfer Collective. Bayback Media has developed a hands-on training program for videotape preservation, though the program is only available in the US. Meepops is responsible for the development of DV Rescue and its associated documentation. Marmia and Transfer Collective have created extensive lists of educational resources on their websites, which contain guides, tools, and workflows that can help you get started on preserving your collections. The preservation of videotape is both a critical and urgent task. As I've discussed today, videotape holds a significant portion of our cultural history from the last 70 years, yet it faces serious challenges from degradation, obsolescence, and the dwindling availability of playback equipment. The process of preserving videotape has only become more difficult over time, making it especially difficult for smaller organizations and individuals. However, the growing availability of open source tools, educational resources, and collaborative efforts within the preservation community offer hope. By continuing to share knowledge, develop resources, and invest in digitization efforts, we can ensure that the rich heritage recorded on videotape is not lost to time. Thank you.